Another storyline that came out of the series so far, game one, um, was the new camera angle that we finally saw after the J.R. Smith blunder, and it takes you to the bench where you can actually see LeBron's reaction to finding out that there were timeouts. And so you can see his body language kind of sink down. Did we, we didn't have any timeouts. He's asking Ty Lue. You can see it right there. Yeah, we did. Oh, we did? Well, hell, that sucks. So LeBron kind of goes into his bag for a second. Um, he's trying to figure out and process what just happened to him. He realizes that now you got to go into overtime. Whatever momentum you had a second ago is all the way gone. Um, does the reaction that you saw on the bench, Jalen, actually affect how you feel about LeBron? Or what does that body language say about the king? Well, it's not necessarily a reflection of LeBron James for me. It's almost like Mike Greenberg when we have our 5 a.m. meetings. He's really prepared. He's really disciplined. He's really diligent. He's sending all types of emails during the middle of the night. And guess how many emails I send? None. Zero. You need somebody <laughs> else to tell you what's happening. And therefore, this is a reflection of the coaching staff and of LeBron James. Because I'm, again, uniquely positioned for this topic because I've been in a situation where there has been confusion about how many timeouts have been remaining. So therefore, when everybody leaves the huddle, it's the coach's responsibility. It's the player's responsibility to understand time and situation. But here's what happened, Maria, Jay, and Greeny. Everybody thought George Hill was going to make it. So they felt like it was a foregone conclusion. He was going to make the free throw. They were going to call a timeout. They were going to be in pole position to now worry about defense. When he missed it, everything got discombobulated. That's so on the coaching staff. I mean, not, if you're a coach, you don't assume anything is going to happen. And yeah. it goes back to what I said before about teams huddling. You no, know, we got into that mm -hmm. argument before. Yeah. There needs to be somebody, if that's Ty Lu being, hey, guys, one timeout left. Here's the situation. None of that was communicated while George Hill was on the free throw line. This automatically comes back to coaching. That's why when we talk about LeBron or we talk about MJ, you look at Bill Jackson would not have let that happen. Bill Jackson would not have let that happen. There would have been some way for him to communicate what time and situation was to his team, or there would have been some dialogue that would have happened there. And I'm not putting this all on Ty Lu. It's a combination of both, but it goes to show you what, what LeBron has to work with. I feel like we're having two different conversations at once, though, because I, I, I hear what you're saying. Certainly, J.R. Smith should have known what the situation was, and maybe that is someone else's fault. The question, though, is, is LeBron's reaction when, when he comes over to the bench here, does this negatively impact their chances of winning in the overtime. That, that's really what I'm trying to figure out here. No. It's a foregone care. We all know J.R. Smith screwed that thing up as badly as anyone has ever screwed anything up in a, in a spot of that magnitude that I can ever remember. I think that's, I think we all agree on that. The question is, does LeBron need to sort of be rally, in rally the troops mode in that moment rather than in, oh, my God, I cannot believe that just happened. Two things very quick. I wasn't talking about J.R. Smith. I was talking about the fact that just about a timeout in general for the entire no, team. No, I get it. And secondly, the reaction, I don't care about the reaction. I care more so about the two and a half minutes that everybody sat there and nobody communicated to each other because it lets me know that that team is stuck in that past I moment where the need coach needs to be, hey, time to move forward. But it Let's could be a person, too. It could be a Richard Jefferson who, unfortunately, is sitting with us and kind of doing broadcasting right now, but who is the guy that has LeBron's ear, can turn LeBron back and focus him back Nobody, forward to the overtime? Maria. And that's the problem. Like, I don't think it's LeBron. It's the fact that you don't even have the guy on the bench that can help you. You don't have a guy on the bench that can help you get through a mentally tough issue. Not, and then you don't have anyone producing on the court either. Like, LeBron has no one. That's kind of how I feel. He's on an island. You saw him sitting by himself on an island. It, it's a, the whole thing is just a disaster, and it's a really revealing, that camera angle is a really revealing look at just how devastating it was. Because candidly, in that moment, mm -hmm. I, let's just say it. LeBron knew what we all knew. It's over. Their chance to win the series <laughs> just over. went right yeah. there. J.R. Smith just <laughs> dribbled it away yeah. in those last four seconds.